Hello, Spark fans. Welcome back to Advancing Spark, where I've got a real short and sweet little video today talking about one of the major changes they've just made to how we look at how clusters are performing inside of Databricks. Now, it has to be a short and sweet video because I'm about to dash off to the airport because I'm in Seattle next week for the Microsoft MVP Summit talking about the future and the roadmap and all things Microsoft, which are very, very cool and very interesting. So we've got to keep things short and sweet. So usual things. One, we've got our online training platform. Do not forget we have the Spark Fans discount if you are watching the channel. So just use that for 10% off any of our training, which I think there's one going live very, very soon to do with machine learning, particularly in Spark. So take a look at that. I'll put a link down below. If you're new around here, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down below in the comments what kind of things you're interested in. What are you looking out for? What do you want to know and get out of Spark and the world and big data and all those good things? Now, let's go have a look at what I'm talking about. I am talking about metrics and ganglia or the lack of ganglia, which sounds weird. So for a long, long time, when we're in Databricks, when using Spark in pretty much any open source environment, there's this thing called ganglia. Ganglia is a metrics tool looking at the actual utilization of both your hardware, of the actual Spark engine, of the application. It's essentially a one-stop shop for all your metrics to do with Spark. But it's old and hard and weird. I made a little video a while ago just explaining, okay, don't worry, it's not actually as scary as it looks. This is how you find all the bits and things you need to use. And it felt a bit like a rite of passage with Spark. It felt like once you understand how to get some kind of insight and information from Spark, uh, from Ganglia about Spark, then you were a real Spark. You knew, you'd made it, you actually understood what was going on. That's gatekeeping, and that shouldn't be the way. So what we now have is a new, much, much simpler, much, much clearer way of looking at metrics, specifically within Databricks. So we're going to have a look at how we look at metrics post Runtime 13, specifically in Databricks. Let's go and have a bit of a look. I've got my Databricks workspace here, and I've got two clusters running. They're both cheap, single node, keep it really, really easy. And I've just ran essentially the same query on both of them. Now, I've got one of them is running runtime 13. One of them's running last runtime, runtime 12.2. So we can do a quick comparison. Apparently, I made one much bigger. Okay. We can do a quick comparison of how we look at the metrics. So let's start with the old way of doing things. So if you're not yet on Runtime 13, which you shouldn't really be in production, it's still in beta, um, we can go and have a look at metrics. And you'd get this screen. You'd get a lot of snapshots of Ganglia, which is just madness. Because what they did is just take an actual literal screenshot of previous um, Ganglia images, just giving you the front page of Ganglia itself, which is just your way of looking at what was a, a quick picture of what your cluster looked like. The main thing Ganglia is really useful for is while the cluster's turned on, you can open up and you get this page. So the 90s come to life. So we can go and see what's going on. We can see the cluster, how it's used. What's the load? That's a, a general kind of weighted sum of uh, network, memory, CPU, general utilization. Or you get the individual breakdowns of memory, CPU, network, etc. Now that gives you the, the full cluster at the top. And then for each of the nodes in our particular uh, cluster environment, in this case, I'm on a single box, which has got one. If I had two workers, I would see three because I get a driver and two workers. Uh, and I could go and spot the differences between those different uh, workers as it goes. Now, that is in general load mode. And I could say, well, actually, I don't want to know about load. I just want to know about CPU. I can scroll up to CPU. And I get all these different options for how I look at things. Do I want to go idle, nice, num, report, speed, system, all these different things? Normally, you'd go to report. So I can do my network report, my load report, my disk usage report. I still get my summary at the top, but then I get a little chart per node in my cluster for the metric I've asked for. That in itself, super useful. Just different ways of cutting and slicing. What does my cluster look like? I can see generally the CPU load on my cluster. There's a spike and then it's been at a low ebb. Basically, I ran one notebook to generate some kind of metrics and then I've not done anything since. And that's mainly what people use Ganglia for inside of Databricks. Now, you have other time slices. You can get it to pull out different metrics. Depends how long your cluster's been turned on. If your cluster's been turned on for a month, you're probably doing things wrong. Um, but you can go and dig in and, and see what's going on there. You can isolate it and say, just tell me about a specific uh, node in my cluster array if I want to. Uh, and then there's a load of other things, a lot of other tabs that don't work. 
They didn't do anything inside of Databricks. It's kind of like as part of the general Ganglia open source thing. They've just put it in. And well, there you go. And most of it doesn't actually do anything. It's mainly just this front page. And that's why it's so confusing for people. One, it looks a bit dated. It looks very confusing. Two, you need to know which things you're looking at in this gigantic list of metrics to work out what you actually care about. And three, the pitfalls. There's a lot of buttons that you can click on that you don't do anything. And that obviously scares people off. That's a very tricky way to try and go, hey, doors are open. Everyone can come and understand what's going on. So that's Ganglia. So... If, you want to, if, you're, if you're not on 13 yet, you want to know more about Ganglia, there's a whole separate video. I'll put a link down at the bottom. You can go and have a look at that. It's essentially, this is what you get. So what's changed? Well, without doing anything, essentially, I just spun up this new cluster. It's on runtime 13. Go into there, and I go to the same place. I click on metrics, and it loads a different page. I no longer get my link to open up Ganglia. I don't get that anymore. I've now got these metrics baked straight in to the Databricks UI can't get to Ganglia. There might be another link that maybe put it away and hidden it somewhere, but currently cannot see Ganglia anywhere. Now, instead of all of those various different metrics, I now get some selected ones. So we've got a choice, hardware, Spark, GPU, if it's a GPU-enabled cluster. So I can say, do I want to look at what's going on on the VMs, on the actual tin that's running this thing, or do I want to look at the Spark application? So for hardware, over the last hour, go for the whole of my cluster, or for a given one of my nodes. What's going on? Number of active nodes. So I can see, is it scaling? Is it scaling up and down? It's been fixed at one, no surprise. Usage, again, I can see there's a little CPU spike because I ran some quick local queries, didn't use much of it. Memory utilization. See, actually there's lots of memory utilization going on. Some of that is pre-allocating uh, it for caching in the Spark application. Some of it's just actually spikes as I go and use some things. Memory swaps going on, free file system space, what's going on in the network. I don't know why I've received that much to the network, but still, <laughs> how much is it sending it through? So I can just get some real, basically, cherry picked some information, a bit like that, the first top part of Ganglia, just going, well, these are the charts you actually care about. Uh, and then we can dig down and say, what does that look like for just one of our nodes, which is going to show me the exact same thing, because it's a single node cluster. There's no difference here. Now, what we don't get here is actually what this looks like for each node. I can't say what's my CPU utilization across each node in my cluster. I've not tried switching, running this on multi-node multi, multi -node clusters. Maybe it's actually it just automatically comes up with more options and things. But even so, it's much, much easier to see what's going on. And go over to Spark and say, well, that's all about the number of active tasks, failures, completions, shuffle reads and writes, how long tasks are taking. Again, not having to memorize various different names of specific reports, and then what that you can infer from that, what that tells you, much, much, much simpler, much, much more, just read the, what it's telling you, and it will actually be very, very clear about what you can learn from it. Kind of makes sense. Uh, and that's it. That's all I want to talk about. All I wanted to show you today is just a, by the way, as soon as you're on Databricks Runtime 13, Ganglia is essentially no more. No longer can you sit in your throne of having crawled through the trenches to understand what Ganglia is actually doing. Now, much, much simpler, much easier. They've got rid of all the other noise. There's the metrics that actually make sense that you actually care about, automatically captured for your given cluster in a much, much easier to read way. It's cool. All right. So yes, do take a look. Obviously, you might be in a little bit of doing stuff, Runtime 13 isn't actually GA yet, so don't obviously switch all of your production systems over to it. But next time you're doing a refresh and you're updating the runtime versions of your various different production clusters, that is one of the benefits you're going to see. You're going to see that come in. And yeah, it should make life a lot easier. I mean, it's a lot more accessible to various different support people, for platform administrators, to the whole swathe of people who aren't necessarily massive Spark nerds, are going to be able to more easily understand what's going on inside your cluster. So that is great to see, really, really useful just to make life a lot easier. Learning a lot of lessons from Databricks SQL in terms of how much that simplified audit view just made everything so much easier to work with. So yeah, exciting stuff. Right, as I said, I am not around next week. I am traveling over here in Seattle. Um, so there'll be another little lull in videos. I know there have been a couple recently, but again, we have so many things to talk about. So as soon as I am back, expect a load of deep, gnarly, sparky videos about a load of the new features that have come out. 
Don't forget, Spark fans discount once again. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.